Now it's time for a little bit of technical information uh, from the person that actually undertook the, uh, the Roval Rail study in 2011 to 2014. Can, uh, can you put your hands together to it, Mr William McDougall? Thank you, Mick. Um, hello, everybody. Now, nowadays, I'm independent. I was with uh, a large consulting company uh, when I did the Roval Rail study, or managed the uh, Roval Rail study in 2011-12. I think it's really sad that nothing's happened since then. Nothing material has happened. Um, there are commitments, um, and it just needs to happen, in my view, now. It's been around as a plan for a long time. Um, it was really planned before Roval, and before Roval started to be built uh, in the 1969 transport plan, and it was on that map of, of projects to be done by 1985. Uh, most of them haven't been done except for the city loop. And one of the important things that you'll see there is a dotted line from Huntingdale through to Caulfield, which is an extra track on the Dandenong line. And that's something I'm going to come back to. In our 2011 report, we said um, that Rover Rail was feasible and it would attract strong demand, as, as Mick mentioned earlier, um, and that it should be protected in planning. Um, but we said it could only proceed after Melbourne Metro and the Dandenong Line upgrade uh, because while you could build the railway, you couldn't run any services from Roval to the city until you had more capacity uh, downstream uh, towards the city. Um, and that was what uh, Melbourne Metro, or the Metro Tunnel as it's now called, is, is planned to do. Uh, what's happened since then? Well, Skyrail has been built on the Dandenong Corridor, that's raised the two tracks above ground to uh, clear a lot of level crossings. Um, that choice of, of, of putting it up in the air was really, I think, a, a political one and a low cost one. It was not considered fully, in my view, the need for potential expansion um, hasn't really been factored in. Although people have said, the government has said it would be possible to add more tracks, but obviously I think it would be a lot more pain to do that if it had been allowed for in the first place when it was built, then that would be a lot easier. The Metro Tunnel is underway, um, considerably delayed by politics from the original time frame. We should have probably had it by now, um, but uh, it won't be open until 2016. And I think one of the issues there was uh, the Napthine government throwing out the Melbourne Metro plan as it was and coming up with the Melbourne Rail Link, which bypassed the CBD rather than going through it, which was rather a strange solution in my view. Um, that was thrown out again and, and Metro Tunnel was resurrected and uh, now it's being built. There's a proposal from the government uh, for a Caulfield to Clayton light rail to a, a tram between Caulfield and Clayton, really to link the campuses and uh, to um, hook up with Chadstone Shopping Centre on the way path. And it had, has been mooted in that plan that it could continue on to Roeville later. Now, that's, that came out of um, the, pol the political side of government. It wasn't uh, the result of any planning studies. And so, you know, just another idea got planted. Um, another one which is, uh, has been promised by the Liberals is uh, extending the Cranbourne line to Clyde. Um, to uh, continue to serve the vast and, and fast-growing eastern suburbs in that area. I don't think anything has been done, anything material has been done while all that's been happening, to preserve route or line capacity um, for over rail services. If you look at the service plan for Melbourne Metro Tunnel, when Melbourne Metro is completed, there's no... Um, incorporation of any Roval services in, in that plan. Of course, that's the plan the day that Metro Tunnel opens. What happens after that is what I think has got to be a main concern from now on. Some of the projects have shortcomings. I've covered some of this. Um, the, level, the, the sky rail involves level crossing removals, high capacity signalling, and larger trains. And the high capacity signalling will allow trains to run closer together. 
and they'll be larger, so that'll increase the capacity of the, of the services. Um, when you look at the service plan for Mel Metro Tunnel, um, there are going to be something like 20 trains an hour coming in from Cranbourne and Pakenham um, through Dandenong and into the, into, the, uh, into the city. And on top of that, there'll be some V-line services. As I said before, one of the problems I have with the Skyrail proposal is it won't be easy to add any more track capacity without a lot more pain for the people that live along that, that corridor. And because Roval doesn't seem to be, to be figuring in the, in the planning at this stage, I have a feeling that that's one of the things that's prompted this light rail idea um, to, uh, to perhaps fob off uh, the people of Roval with something um, inferior, in my view, which will be lower capacity and a lot longer trip into the city. Um, it will link up, as I said before, uh, Clayton Campus and Chadston and uh, Caulfield. Um, but it, I don't think it's anywhere near as effective or as desirable as a, as a heavy rail link. I think I've talked about Metro Tunnel as well, so we'll move on to the next one. Um, one of the key elements of the improve, improvements that are going on is to go to high capacity signalling or moving block signalling, I think. What's being discussed is moving block signalling, which is essentially, rather than having a train, a whole section of track between signals being um, blocked off for each train to go through, effectively using computing um, and communications, you have a moving block around each train. So it has a, an envelope of safety around it. Um, <coughs> According to the Melbourne Metro um, material, uh, the high capacity signaling system will provide two to three minute train headways. So, as I said before, Cranbourne and Pakenham will have 20 trains an hour, so that's a three minute headway. And they're gonna be two V-line trains. That's on, as I say, the, the first um, year of opening of Melbourne Metro. The actual capacity though, you can't expect to get trains every two to three minutes running through because you need to run express trains and the V-line trains don't stop at every station. And so the actual capacity depends on the mix of services using the, the rail line. And which is why when you do have a mix of services, as in other parts of the network, if you've got more than two tracks, you've got a lot more flexibility. This is, you know, to me is the key question, whether there's going to be room um, for any meaningful services to Roville uh, with the high capacity signalling on, on uh, Skyrail and through Melbourne Metro. The problem that I think this stems from is really that most of these projects have really been a, a series of political um, moves rather than in in coordination with any uh, wider and longer term plan. We know that Melbourne is moving towards 8 million by, by uh, in 30 years or so. It's not far off now, the middle of the century. We don't have any mode share or capacity targets for each of the modes of transport. There's no plan that tells us or has, has given us a clear idea of how Melbourne is actually gonna function when there are 8 million people, uh, how many uh, roads and railway services uh, we need and of what type and where they should go and, and how it should all be integrated. Taking account of all the things that are going to change in, in that time frame, new technologies and all forms of transport coming on board as well. Um, I don't think that more and wider freeways will ever be enough. We must do something very serious and very dramatic with our rail network and we, we should modernise it and we should expand it at least threefold so that it takes more than its current share of travel if, it's, if we're going to have any hope of Melbourne being able to, uh, to function at 8 million people. And there is no plan for that happening. Um, the government has really refused to, uh, um, to update uh, its strategic plan and even then the plans that they do have simply don't give us the, uh, the clarity that's needed for, for, the, um, for the future. And 
because of that, at the moment anyway, it seems to me as though there's a, there's a real possibility that light rail may be the only choice for Roeville, unless we can actually get some of these things fixed and, and happening. And that's uh, my major concern at the moment. Thank you very much. <laughs>